sometimes the church asks us to celebrate and we say no. Let's stop doing that. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars of Renewal and this is Ascension Presents. Depending on when you're watching this, either happy, blessed last week of Advent, maybe Merry Christmas. Here's the thing, right? The church, the church has some certain seasons, right? There's, there's seasons where the church invites us, Holy Mother Church invites us to fasting. But there's also seasons where the church invites us to feasting. And we're pretty good at taking the fasting stuff serious. Uh, we're often not as good as taking the feasting stuff serious. And so we have, we're Christmas. We have Christmas and we have the Christmas octave, the eight days of celebrating Christmas. We also have uh, the Easter octave, right? Where the church invites us, Holy Mother Church says, people of God, for eight days, I want you to celebrate. People of God, the, the gift that we are celebrating, that we are commemorating, that we are receiving anew is so big, you're going to need eight days to receive the gift. Let's be lavish in our receiving of the gift. Um, let's let our generosity of celebration matches, if you will, uh, in a little way, the generosity of the gift. So here's a little review. What we're going to talk about is a little reminder on a, a good way to understand celebration. And then like talking about a little bit of like liturgically and, and particularly with, with their octave, like what are some things that we can do? I really love, um, and I've spoken on it here before, but I really love, again, talking about in, in the church, talking about celebration as doing the work of receiving the gift. To celebrate is to do the work of receiving the gift. And the example I always use is to look back in your childhood at like your experiences of Halloween versus All Saints Day. Many of us have a lot of memories um, connected to Halloween and none to All Saints Day, right? And, and why is that? Uh, because for Halloween, we're, we're doing the work of receiving the gift. We're celebrating. We're getting dressed up. We're putting on costumes. We have special food. We're going trick-or-treating. We decorate the house. All this sort of stuff. We're doing all this sort of stuff. And because of how that engages our humanity, like uh, it leaves deep impressions, right? All Saints Day, right, which is the next day, November 1st, almost none of us, it's a solemnity, right? Almost none of us have any memories. Why? Because we didn't do anything. <laughs> Nothing changed. We didn't do the work of receiving it of the gift. It's not that the gift wasn't there to be received. It just wasn't received because we don't get dressed up. We don't do anything special. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of folks don't pray or go to Mass, things like that, right? And so it just kind of passes us by. And so we want to we want to make sure that when we are celebrating with the church, we're doing the work of receiving the gift. Like for on fr and like Fridays and, and like ferial days, normal days, Lent, like the work of receiving the gift the church wants to offer us in those times is going to be entering into a greater spirit of prayer and recollection and penance and fasting, etc. That's the work of receiving that gift. But for Christmas, for Easter, on Sundays, um, there's absolutely a prayer component, but there's also just, we got it. We got to do something. <laughs> we got to do something to receive the gift. And this is how it's going to really deeply impact us, our loved ones, our families, etc. So Christmas, uh, the Christmas octave, what do we do? Like, what are, like, how can we celebrate so that we can receive the gift? We'll also talk about something about with the, with the whole Christmas season. Uh, number one, I understand maybe by the time you're watching this, it's a little bit too late. Uh, the, the, the octaves that the church offers us uh, are great opportunities to, if we have the space, to use some of our like vacation time to, to, to maybe cut back, to create a little bit more space. I think luckily, you know, a lot of folks watching this are students, college students. A lot, hopefully you have like a break to kind of create some space, to create some space. That's kind of like, that's kind of step number one. Like number two, I, uh, an essential component of this is 100% uh, going deeper in prayer, particularly, I would say, prayer touching and receiving from drinking from the fountain uh, of the liturgy. During all of the church's like seasons, the special season, I'm thinking of Advent, Christmas, Christmas season, Easter, Easter season, Lent, like the church really feeds us absolute gold, gives us absolute gold in the liturgy, in the propers, in the readings. And so, so I really, first of all, encourage you to like kind of step up your liturgical game. So if you can create space, like maybe maybe you only go to Mass, you know, on like Christmas and like the, the Holy Days of Obligation and Sunday, like the Easter octave, the Christmas octave are great times 
um, to spend a little bit more, to, to go to daily mass if you can do it. If you can't go to daily mass, can you pray with the readings of each of, these, of each of the octave days, the Christmas octave days. I think that's a really gold thing to do. Uh, number two is, um, you know, I, we, we have this great gift of like the manger uh, and the, the infant newborn baby Jesus, right, that we celebrate uh, in a special way at Christmas. And uh, number one, we really do, I think, want to have like 100%, not just I think like, I, we definitely 100%, if we can afford it, have a manger set up in a, in a kind of a privileged place in our homes. Like, so let's, let's make sure we got our, our mangers set up and then let's go and visit it. And so that could be something where you as a family, maybe like before the, like your dinner or when you wake up or something like that, you go and pray in front of, of the manger. And I, I just, or if you have roommates, like to go together to do something very tangible and concrete in front of the manger, right? It engages our humanity. We go there, we do something, we see something, there's something unique there. Uh, this is a great way to celebrate and to do the work of receiving the gift. Uh, a third one, which is kind of related, is I live with a friar, a brother, who likes to, uh, during, during Advent and also like the Christmas season, he likes to actually carry around with him like a little infant Jesus. So maybe he'll like have it in his pocket or something like that. And I know it's not like super common, but I really like it. And when I was thinking about it first, I was like, okay, is this like, is, is having like the baby Jesus in your pocket? Is that like 100% appropriate? We carry rosaries with crucifixes. We have crucifixes, things like that, like in, in our pockets around our, our necks. Like, so I, I do think that we've kind of made the judgment that that's like, okay. And I, I do think that there's something about having again, like, the baby Jesus with you like in your pocket maybe like in your car or something like that maybe you don't have pockets where you where you can like throughout the day just sort of take hold of like the baby Jesus right as, as some people might do with the rosary or the crucifix like specifically for the Christmas season the Advent season to do that with with like the baby Jesus I think is just a really good way to engage our our humanity and, and, a, and an invitation to pray another one of course like Christmas music but like legit Christmas music right like to really prayerfully listen and have like like some of these soundtracks that go along with Christmas, like 100%, like, let's do it. And then there is a component of feasting, and it's really awesome. Uh, and I, I really love it, the way in which the church invites us, the feast, to really celebrate in such a concrete way that we can, we can taste, right? We can taste the goodness of the Lord. And so, um, so definitely like some specific Christmas food, snacks, whatever. But like this is a time to... You know, it's eight days of solemnity. It's kind of a day without being gluttonous, absolutely without being gluttonous, without being wasteful, without being, uh, without, with, with, with continuing with the spirit of mindfulness of the poor to have a time uh, of celebration and feasting. But like eight days, I think eight days of opening up presents, 100% makes sense. A little one each of those days, like maybe you give most of them at Christmas, but like keep opening them up. Like let's, let's do that. And then I definitely think, um, again, like the whole, we want to celebrate the whole Christmas season. And so giving yourself, like, you, you definitely want to keep praying. Like, you got you to gotta do some special prayer every day that's Christmas related, 100%. But also, like, give yourself a little treat the whole Christmas season. In this fasting season, we're going to, like, deny ourselves every day. But when it, right, when it is, it is the Christmas season, like, I just think Holy Mother Church is like, hey, Jesus is born. <laughs> Have a little cookie with your coffee or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, again, without being gluttonous, while maintaining a spirit of mindfulness and generosity to the poor, but to do a little something sweet to help uh, engage our humanity as part of this work, uh, the celebration, part of doing the work of receiving the gift. Uh, hey, we got comments here. Maybe you have some really cool ways in which you have seen or that you celebrate Christmas, the Christmas octave. You got some little Christmas goodie recommendations. Like, Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's do the work of receiving the gift. Let's be lavish in our celebration, in our receptivity because of the lavishness of the love and the gift that the Lord has given us and that we celebrate uh, with the advent and the birth of Christ, the newborn King. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Look forward to being with you again next week. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth. Somos peregrinos, poco a poco, little by little. Vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. Peace.